talk to who? Well, just tell me what your name is. My name is Fountain Hughes. I was born in Charlottesville, Virginia. My grandfather belonged to Thomas Jefferson. My grandfather was 115 years old when he died. And now I am 101 years old. That's enough. She used to work. But what she made, I don't know. I never asked her. You just go ahead and talk away there. You don't mind, do you, Uncle Pan? No. And when now your husband and you both are young, you all try to live like young people ought to live. Don't want everything somebody else has got. Whatever you get, it is shown. Be satisfied and don't spend your money until you get it. So many people get in debt. Well, that always oh, it's just cheap and I bought it. You spend your money before you get it because you're going in debt for what you want. When you want something, Wait until you get the money and pay for it cash. That's what I've done. If I wanted anything, I waited until I got the money and I paid for it cash. I never bought nothing on time in my life. Now, plenty of people, if they want a suit of clothes, they go to work and they buy them on time. Well, they said it was cheap. If you got the money, you can buy them cheaper. They want something for, for waiting on you for uh, till you get ready to pay them. And if you got the money, you can go where you choose and buy it when you go, when you want it. You see, don't buy it because somebody else go down and run a debt and run a bill, or I'm going to run it too. Don't do that. I never done it. Now I'm 100 years old, and I don't owe nobody five cents. I ain't got no money. <laughs> yeah. I'm happy, <laughs> just as happy as somebody that oh, got million. Nothing worries me. I'm not. My head ain't even white. And uh, nothing in the world it. worries me. I can sit here in this house till night. Nobody can come and say, Mr. Hughes, you owe me a quarter, you owe me a dollar, you owe me five cents. No, you can't. I don't owe you nothing. Why? I never made no bills in my life. And I'm living too. And I'm a hundred years old. And if you take my advice today, you'll never make a bill. Of course, what you want, give me money, pay them cash. And then the rest of the money is yours. But when you run the bill, they, well, so much and so much, and you don't have to pay it's nothing down. It's all, and when you come to pay, it's all, you have to pay no more. But they, they'll, they'll charge you more. They're getting something out of it, else they wouldn't trust you. But I can't just say what they're getting. But they're getting something out of it, else they wouldn't want your credit. Now, I tell you that. Anybody that trusts you for two dollars or a have a count with them by the month or by the week, store count or any count, they are getting something out of it. They'll say they don't want to accommodate you that much to trust you. Now, if I want, of course I ain't got no clothes, but if I want some clothes, I, if I ain't got no money, I'm going to wait till I get the money to buy them. Indeed I am. I'm not going to say, of course, I can get them on trust. I go down and get them. I got to pay a dollar more anyhow. They'll either charge them more if they say taxes are so much. But if I got the money to pay cash up, I pay the taxes and all down cash, then I, it's all done with. So many of colored people is head over heels in debt. I trust me, trust me. I get it on time. They want a set of furniture. Go down and pay down so much and rest on time. You done paid, the, done paid for them then. When you pay down so much, you may charge you $50 for hundred dollars for a set and you pay down twenty five dollars cash, you done paid for them. Mm. That's all it was worth, twenty five dollars. And you pay now you I'm seventy five dollars in debt now. Because I have to pay a hundred dollars that set. And it's only worth about twenty five dollars. But you buy it on time. But people ain't got sense enough to know it. But when you get old like I am, you come and you think, well, I have done wrong. I should have kept my money until I wanted this thing, and when I wanted, I take my money and go cash cash for it. And else I uh, do without it. That's, suppose you want a new dress. You say, well, I uh, I buy it, but uh, I don't need it. 
but I can get on time. Well, let's go down to the store today and get something on time. Well, you go down and get dressed on time, something else, and let them, I want that to sell that to you on time. You don't have to pay nothing down. But there's a payday coming. And when the payday comes, they want you to come pay them. If you don't, they can't get no more. Well, if you never do that, if you don't start it, you will never end it. I never did buy nothing on time. I must sell you on this. I'm sitting right here now today, and if it's the last word I've got to tell you, I never even much as tried to buy a shirt on time. And plenty of people go to work, down to the store and buy uh, three and four dollars for a shirt, two, three, uh, seven, eight dollars for a pair of pants. Of course, you get them on time. I don't know, no, no. I say, I've got, I, I buy something for five dollars. Of course, I got the five dollars. I'll pay for it. I'm done today. You talk about how old you are, Uncle Fountain. You well. <laughs> how far back do you remember? I remember. Well, I tell you, uh, things come to me in spells, you know. I remember things uh, more when I'm laying down than I do when I'm standing when I'm walking around. Mm -hmm. Now, in my boy days, why? Well, uh, Boys live quite different from the way they live now. But boys wasn't as mean as they are now either. Boys lived to... They had a good time, and the masters didn't treat them bad. And they was always satisfied. They never wore no shoes until they were 12 or 13 years old. And now people put on shoes on babies, you know, when they're two years, when they're month old, I'd be, I don't know how old put shoes on baby just as soon as you see them out in the street they got shoes on. I told a woman the other day, I said, I never had no shoes till I was thirteen years old. She said, What? Well, but you bruise your feet all up and stump your toes. I said, Yes, many times I've stumped my toes and the blood run out of them. I didn't make them buy me no shoes. And I've been oh, oh you wore a dress like a woman till I was I believe 10, 12, 13 years old. So you wore a dress, though? Yes, I didn't wear no pants, and of course it didn't make boys' pants. Boys wore dresses. Now the women's wearing the dresses, and the boys are going with the... Uh, well, the women's wearing the pants now, and the boys are wearing the dresses. <laughs> Still. <laughs> Who did you work for, Uncle Fountain, when... Who did I work for? Yeah. But I, you mean when I was a slave? Yeah, when you were a slave, who did you work for? Well, I belonged to um, um, uh, Burnley's when I was a slave. My mother belonged to Burnley's. Uh, but uh, we uh, was all slave children. And soon after, when we found out that we were free, well, then we were uh, bound out to different people, Thicklin, and and Andrews, and all such people as that. And we would run away and wouldn't stay with them. Well, then we'd just go and stay anywhere we could, and lay out at night and anywhere. We had no home, you know. We just turned out like a lot of cattle. You know how to turn the cattle out in the pasture? Well, after freedom, you know, colored people didn't have nothing. Colored people didn't have no beds when they were slaves. They won't slip on the floor. Pat it here and pat it there. Just like a, a lot of uh, wild people, we didn't, we didn't know nothing. We didn't like to look at no book. And there were some freeborn colored people where they had a little education, but there were very few of them where we was. And we all had a, what you call, I might call it now, uh, jail sentence. We just same as we were in jail. Now I couldn't go from here across the street or I couldn't go to nobody's house without I have a note or something from my master. And if I had that pass, that was what we call a pass. If I had that pass, I could go wherever he sent me and I'd have to be back. You know, when I, whoever he sent me to, they, they'd give me another pass and I'd bring that back so as to show how long I'd been gone. We couldn't go out and stay an hour or two hours or something like that. They send you, now say for instance, I go to the Shirley's place, I'd have to walk. 
and I'd have to be back maybe in an hour, maybe they'd give me an hour, I don't know just how long they'd give me, but they'd give me a note so there wouldn't nobody interfere with me to tell who I belonged to. And when I come back, boy, I'd carry it to my master and give that to him, that'd be all right. But I couldn't just walk away like the people does now, you know. It was what they call, we were slaves, we belonged to people. They sell us like they sell horses and cows and hogs and all like that, have an auction bench and they put you on, up on the bench and beat on you the same as you're bidding on cattle, you know. Was that in Charlotte that you were a slave? Hmm? Was that in Charlotte or Charlottesville? That was in Charlottesville. Charlottesville, Virginia. Sell the women, sell the men. Oh, they and then if they had any bad ones, they'd sell them to the nigger traders, what they call the nigger traders, and they'd ship them down south, and sell them down south. But uh, otherwise, if you were a good, good person, they wouldn't sell you. But if you were bad and mean, they didn't want to beat you and knock you around, they'd sell you to the, what they call the nigger traders. They'd have a regular, I was sailed every month, you know, at the courthouse. And, uh, then they'd sell you, maybe $200, $100, $500. Were well, you ever sold from one person to another? Hmm? Were well, you ever sold? No, I never was sold. You always stayed with the same, all, all same the, person? I was too young to sell. Oh, I see. See, I wasn't old enough during the war to sell, during the army. And uh, my father got killed in the army, you know, so it left us small children just to live on whatever people choose to give us. I work, I was bound out for a dollar a month, and my mother used to collect the money. Children wouldn't, couldn't spend money when I come along. And, and in fact, when I come along, young men, young men couldn't spend no money until they was 21 years old. And then you're 21, well, then you could spend your money. But if you wasn't 21, you couldn't spend no money. I couldn't take I couldn't spend 10 cents if somebody gave it to me. Hmm. Because they'd think, well, he might have stole it. We all come along, you might say, we had to give an account of what you'd done. You, do, you couldn't just do things and walk off and say, I didn't do it. You'd have to give an account of it. Now, uh, after we got freed and it turned us out like cattle, we, could, we didn't have nowhere to go. We didn't have nobody to boss us, and uh, we didn't know nothing. And there wasn't, wasn't no school. And when they started a little school, well, people that were slaves, they couldn't many of them go to school, except they had a father and a mother. And my father was dead, and my mother was living. But she had three, four other little children. She had to put them all to work for, to help take care of the others. So we had, well, we had what you call worse than dogs have got it now. The dogs have got it now better than we had it when we come along. I know, I remember one night I was out after I was free and I didn't have nowhere to go. I didn't have nowhere to sleep. I didn't know what to do. My brother and I were together. So we knew a man that had a a living stable there. And we crept in that yard and got in one of the hacks of the automobile and slept in that hack all night long. So next morning we could get out and go where we belonged. But we were afraid to go at night because we didn't know where to go and didn't know what time to go. But we had got away from there and we were afraid to go back. So we kept in slept in that thing all night until the next morning and we got back where we belonged before the people got up. As soon as they come at come on break, we got out and come at to go where we belong. But we never done that but the one time. After that, we always, if it was away, we'd try to get back before night come. But then that was on a Sunday, too, that we'd done that. Now, uh, when we were slaves, we couldn't do that, you see? Mm -hmm. And if we got free, we didn't know nothing to do. And my mother, she then, she hunted places, and bound us out for a dollar a month. And we stayed there maybe a couple of years. And, and she'd come over and collect the money every month. 
and a dollar was worth more then and ten dollars is now. And I, and the men used to work for ten dollars a month, hundred and twenty dollars a year used to hire that way. Uh, now you can't get a man for fifty dollars a month. If you pay a man now fifty dollars a month, you don't want to work for it. More like fifty dollars a week nowadays. <laughs> well, that's just it exactly. They want fifty dollars a week, and they ain't got no more now. And we had then, and we no more money. But of course, they bought more stuff, more property, and all like that. We didn't have no property. We didn't have no home. We had nowhere, nothing. We didn't have nothing on it. Just to like the cattle, we were just turned out and uh, get along the best you could. Nobody to look after us. So been slaves all our lives. My mother was a slave, my sisters were a slave, my father was a slave. Who was your father a slave for, Uncle Fallon? He's a slave for Burnley, he, he, belonged, he belonged to Burnley. Didn't he belong to Thomas Jefferson at one time? He or? didn't belong to Thomas Jefferson. He my did. grandfather belonged to Thomas Jefferson. Oh, your grandfather did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, my father belonged to uh, Burnley. And uh, Burnley died during the war time because uh, he was afraid he'd have to go to war. But uh, now, you, and in them days, you could hire a substitute to take your place. Well, he couldn't get a substitute to take his place, so he ran away from home, and he took hold. And when he come back, the war was over, but he died. And then, uh, if he had lived, it couldn't have been no good. The Yankees just come along and and just broke the mill open and rolled all the flour out in the river and broke the, broke the stove and sold all the meat out in the street and sold all the sugar out. And we, we boys would pick it up and carry it and give it to our middle missus and master, young master, until we come to be... Well, I don't know how. I don't know to tell you the truth. When I think of it today, I don't know how I'm living. There's none, none of the rest of them is I know of is living. I'm the oldest one that I know is living. But still, I'm thankful to the Lord. Now, if, uh, if my master wanted to send me, he never said he couldn't get a horse and ride and walk, give you a note. You walk, you'd be barefooted. Cold, but didn't make no difference. He wasn't no more than a dog, some of them in them days. He wasn't treated as good as he treat dogs now. But still, I don't like to talk about it because it makes makes people feel bad. You know. Well, I I could say a whole lot I don't like to say. I won't say a whole lot no. Do you remember much about the Civil War? No, I don't remember much about it. You're a little young then, I guess. Huh? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I remember when the Yankees come along and took all the good horses and took all the, sort of all the meat and flour and sugar and stuff out in the river and let it go down the river. And they know the people who wouldn't have nothing to live on, but they done that. And that's the reason why I don't like to talk about it. And people, and if you was cooking anything to eat in there for yourself, and if they, if they was hungry, they'd go and eat it all up, you wouldn't even get nothing. They just come in and drink up all the milk, milk and just do as they please. In time to be passing by all night long, walking, mud, raining. Oh, they have a cold time. Colored people are free. They ought to be awful thankful. And some of them are sorry they are free now. Some of them now would rather be slaves. Hmm. Which would you rather be, Uncle Fountain? Me? Which I'd rather be. <laughs> you know what I'd rather do? If I thought, had any idea, that I'd ever be a slave again, I'd take a gun and just end it all right away. Because you're nothing but a dog. You're not a thing but a dog. Night never comes out. You have nothing to do. Time to cut tobacco. If they want you to cut all night long out in the field, you cut. And if they want you to hang all night long, you hang, you hang tobacco. It didn't matter about your tired being 
Todd, you're afraid to say you're Todd. They just, well. When, when did you come to Baltimore? You know when, you don't remember when Garfield died, do you? When they, when they shot Garfield? No, I don't think you were born. I don't think no, I was. No. Well, I don't even remember what year that was myself now. But I know you wasn't born. Well, I come to Baltimore that year anyhow. I don't remember what year it was now myself. But if I laid, if I was laying in the bed, I could remember. But uh, I don't remember now. Did you go to work for Mr. Shirley when you came to Baltimore? Oh, no, no. I worked for a man by the name of Reed when I first come to Baltimore. I used to uh, commence a whole manure for him. The old horses was here then. Uh, no, no electric cars, no cable cars, the old horse cars. And I used to haul manure, go around to different stables, you know, and uh, people, everybody had horses for for the use when I first come here. They had coachmen, men to drive them around. Didn't have uh, automobiles, they hadn't been here so long. And, and then they put on a cable car, what they call cable car. Well, they run them for a little while, or maybe a couple of three years or four years. Then somebody invented the electric car, and that first run on North Avenue. Well, had to run a while and they kept on inventing and inventing until they got them all, all different kinds of cars in boy. There was uh, horse cars and there wasn't no electric car at all. There was no wasn't no big cars like you got now, you know. I just can't I just can't think of uh, what year it was. But uh, yeah, uh-huh. you're not getting tired, are you, young friend? No, no, I ain't. I'm just same as at home. It's like I'm sitting in the house. And uh, see what. I was thinking about, oh, now you know how we served the Lord when I come along, a boy? How was that? We would go to somebody's house, and, uh, well, we didn't have no house like we got now, you know. We had these, what they call, log cabin. And they have one old, one, maybe one old colored man would be there, maybe he'd be as old as I am, and he'd be the preacher. Not as old as I am now, but he'd be the preacher, and they'd all sit down and listen to him talk about the Lord. Well, he'd say, well, I wonder, sometimes you say, I wonder if we'll ever be free. Well, some of them say, well, we're going to ask the Lord to free us. So they'd say, well, we're going to sing. Wonder shall I ever reach heaven? Wonder shall I fly? And they would sing that for about an hour. Then the next one they'd get up and say, Let's sing a song. We're going to live on milk and honey. Way by and by. They'd, oh, I can hear them singing now, but I can't, I can't uh, uh, repeat it like I could in them days. But someday when I'm not hoarse, I could tell you, and I could sing it for you, but I'm too hoarse now. And then he would sing, I'm going to, I'm going to, sing around the order. Oh, I wish I could, I wish I could sing it for you. I'm going to sing around well, the order. Well, I wish you could too. And they, they, uh, well, there's <coughs> someday when you come over here and I'm not host. You get me to come up here and I'll, I'll sing, I'll try to sing it for you. Okay, I'm going to do that. He says, uh, now, I heard people here now sing uh, about roll, shirt, and roll. 
Well, that's an old time people. That's what the old people used to sing in the old back days. Is that but roll, Jordan roll? Yeah, but they don't sing it like the old people used to sing it in them days. Mm -hmm. They sing it quite different now. Uh, there's another one they sing. By and by, when the morning comes. Well, they sing that different, too. But the old, they're getting the old people's song. I hear them come over the radio. I know them all. They're as good as they, but they sing them different. They have different names. Yes, yeah, so well, they cut them off short and all like that. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, if I had my voice, I would sing just one for you so you go on that road, but I can't do it on account of my voice. But someday you come over here, you come and call me up and let me know how my voice is. Ever since I took that medicine from my doctor, it hurt my voice. Hmm. I, I, now there was a preacher in my house here, and he lived right next door to me, and he played on the piano. And he played something, and I sung it for him. And now he wants me to go down to his church next Sunday. I told him, I said, now, if I go down to your church, I'll not sing nothing. Because if I do, I get a whole horse, I can't talk. But he said, Brother Hughes, I don't care whether you're singing or not. I just want you to go down there and let the people see who you are. Let them see what, what the old people is. I said, well, uh, well more I'll, go, I'll be glad to go down with him. So uh, next Sunday, I'm going down to his church if I leave him. Nothing happened. Yeah. But if he, if he sings something old, I got <laughs> I'll sing along with oh, him. I feel, I feel the spirit now, but I can't. I got to keep quiet. Now, you, do you ever hear this fellow that comes over the radio? I think they call him Holmes. Comes over Sunday night about 12 o'clock on WFBR. You no, never I don't have heard him or not. Well, I, you turn him on. He comes on a quarter after 11 on Sunday night. Well, you must have heard him because he says, can't, God, you can't keep a good man down. So he makes so much noise, look like everybody ought to hear him. But now when that fellow comes on, I'm laying in the bed. Don't you know, I get just so I got to be in that, because it's all old time business. Mm -hmm. And uh, somebody don't like it, they says, I don't like home. I says, why? Oh, he says, it makes too much noise. I said, well, the Bible said make a noise over Jesus. Jesus said make a noise over me. So he makes a noise over me. And I does enjoy it, certainly in show. Oh, he's, oh, everybody, and he's got a big crowd, and we just get so happy I got to do that, too. <laughs> Boy, when you feel the grace of God, you got to jump up. I lay in bed, I got to get up, help, do, help carry on. And then next morning, I can't talk. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Jimmy had medicine, it just told me all of this. Mm-hmm. I sure hope now, it's coming back again, because I'd like, I'd like to hear you sing. The old people used to say, I wonder if I shall ever reach heaven, or wonder shall I fly. Well, I used to sing it. I can, well, sometimes I feel the spirit, you know, and I might get to sing something again someday. People now, I... Do you go to church every Sunday, Uncle Fenn? No, don't, don't go to church at all. I sit, listen to the radio. Listen to it on the radio, huh? Because I'll tell you why I don't go to church. Do you rather not have this on? Hmm? <laughs> you rather not tell me or you rather not have this on when you tell me? It don't make a difference. I ain't gonna say nothing wrong. I ain't gonna say nothing wrong. If I, 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 I think...